All right. Hello and welcome to Backstage with Gig Performer. My name is Brett Pontecorvo. You might know me from the YouTube channel and blog Live Keyboardist, but if you have been tuning in recently, perhaps you know me from here. We are live with Backstage with Gig Performer, where we go over uh, tips, tricks, insights, all of the, the inner workings of Gig Performer um, and what's going on. So if you are here, you're checking out Make sure you give this video a like, say hello in the comments. We are reading them. Uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, oftentimes, we're joined by David and Naboja, who are the co-founders who happen to also be musicians. Um, thank you guys so much for being here today. Today, we are going over the first half of what is new inside Gig Performer 4.1. Um, there are some pretty cool updates that are going on, um, and a lot of them are work Workflow, uh, workflow related stuff. So I realized all my volume was turned off, but I think you can still hear me. We've got Pascal coming in from France. Hello, Pascal. Welcome. Carol, hello from Augusta, Georgia. Walter, Cruz from Brazil. Yes. Okay. Um, Moose Museum. I'm very interested, very curious about this name. Um, hello from Germany, Carl Lutzbase. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, so we're going to jump into some 4.1 updates. If you guys are not currently using Gig Performer, don't forget you can check out uh, a free two-week trial of Gig Performer from uh, the Gig Performer website. Try some of these things out for yourself. And these updates, everything that I'm showing you, uh, will be made available very soon, uh, October 7th. Um, is when it's coming out. Oh, we've got more hellos. Uh, St. Louis. Hello, Michael. Hello, Marty from Scotland. So happy to have you guys here. Okay, should we do it? Let's do it. Um, I'm going to pop over here to Gig Performer. So um, one of the features that we have included is the ability uh, to more easily um, move these global rack space parameters into your local rack spaces. So the big update with Gig Performer 4 was that we now have um, or a global rack space that can be accessed from anywhere, right? So you can save resource by using uh, effects within your global rack space. But you can also control them from a local rack space because your reverb might be different for your different sounds, even though you're using the same set of reverbs. So let's pop over briefly to our global rack space and check out our wiring view. So inside of here, um, I've just got a really simple reverb and a really simple delay. Okay, and it's hooked up to a from Global Rack Spaces block. And if we pop back over to our regular uh, local rack spaces here, you can see I've just got MIDI in going to a Global Rack Space, to Global Rack Space, and then coming back in the from Global Rack Space. Now, this is just a piano sound right now. But perhaps I want to be able to use my variations to switch between different types of... Uh, effects using effects that are in my global rack space. So what we can do is if we come into our edit mode, you will see that we have this advanced parameter here and it's a global parameter assignment where this is gonna start. So I can come in here and choose any parameter that I want. I have chosen parameter zero and the same thing for uh, this size and the same thing I've done for all of these. So any widget that you have mapped, you can come in here to your widget properties, go over to advance and choose a global parameter assignment. So this is where we're gonna start. Now, once we've done this, our next step is getting it into our local rack space. Now, in order it for it to work within a local rack space, we need to make sure that we have a from global rack space block. Now, this makes sense because if you don't have that, you're not gonna hear your effect, right? So let's check out how this is done. Now we already know that within this simple piano sound, I have both a to and a from global rack space block. So if I head over here, go into edit, mo edit mode, and perhaps I wanna have control over the gain, okay? I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna choose Command C. I'm gonna head back over to my local rack space here, enter edit mode, and check out what can happen. If I hold down the shift key, which I realize you can't see, but holding down the shift key, if I right mouse click and hit paste, it's gonna bring in 
the two global rack space version of this block. So check it out. Here's my plugin, two global rack space gain. Now, when I go and move this, I have control over the reverb amount from within my local rack space. So if I want to have this variation change the amount, I can do so very easily using this workflow enhancement. Now, this will work for anything so long as you have it assigned within the uh, global parameter settings. So just one more time, in case we missed it, when we're in our global rack space and we go into edit mode, if we jump over to this advanced block here, we're able to uh, have our global parameter assignment. Um, sometimes it might be worth just copying the whole darn thing, which is what um, I would recommend doing because at least then you can see everything, okay? And automatically this is brought in and you have the ability to set all of these parameters right from your local rack space. This is a major workflow improvement that will be included with Gig Performer 4.1 that will be released on October 7th. So if you're a current Gig Performer user, um, you will get a notification when you open Gig Performer and says, hey, new update available. Um, if you're on the fence, check out our uh, free two-week trial see uh, if it works for you. Okay, uh, if at any point you have any questions about any of these features, feel free to let me know in the comments. We're going to move over um, to the next, uh, next feature, which is to directly select a song part or variation. Um, I'm very excited about this one. I think it can be super useful. So I'm going to head back to my global rack space, and I'm going to insert um, three pads here. So did I get three? I did. Here they are. Okay. So what we can do now that was not previous, um, we've got somebody popping in that says, hey, how is that different from 4.0? This is a good question. So while this functionality was available, it needed to be done manually. Now we have the ability to just copy and paste. Um, so it automatically makes that link to the global parameter for you. So it's, it, it makes it faster to answer your question. Okay, so if you have a system actions block, let's just make sure I do actually have it. I'm pretty sure I do. Okay, yep, so here's my system actions block. We have added a new ability to directly select a song part. So I'm going to choose system actions here. I'm going to choose number one. I'll do the same thing for here. I'll choose number two. And I'll do the same thing here, system actions. And I'll choose number three. Um, also, there's this little thing down here, right? This is a, a bonus tip. Um, but if you type in part of the string, it will pull it up. It'll filter everything down. Just makes it a little bit faster to map. So now when we head over to our simple piano sound, I will have direct access to any of these mapped variations, which is really nice. Um, this can come in handy, by the way, because if you have uh, multiple different rack spaces, right, with different things, um, you know, you can use one set of these blocks within your global rack space to move between them. Um, so... very quickly selecting uh, these different parts just using these buttons. Um, I really like this. I think this is a uh, fantastic addition. Okay, so we've got three more new features that are coming up. If you have any questions so far about anything we've covered, uh, do feel free to pop them in the comments. But the next thing that I want to show you is that in Gig Performer 4.1, we're going to have the ability to control Chord Pro um, in a little bit more of an effective way. Um, so because Chord Pro uh, was totally new to me, and maybe it's totally new to you, I want to show you the whole kit and caboodle here um, because... Uh, because it took me some thinking to figure out. So here goes. 
Um, we have the ability to create uh, Chord Pro files inside of Gig Performer. Now, you have to get them from somewhere. Cordy.com is a really good place to do that from. And since we have been working on um, Rosanna, let's, let's see if we can find the Rosanna tune here. So here it is. And we can come over and you'll see we've got all these chords. Um, but if you actually copy and paste this, you might have a bit of a problem because this is not really Chord Pro. But if you check up at the top right here, there's this View button and you can choose Chord Pro. And so now we have all of this stuff set up for us in a way that we can actually copy and paste and add it into Gig Performer. Now, this might be a review for you if you are a guitar player, but uh, since this was so new to me, I was like, we should definitely show it. So let's head over here to our set list view. Let's create a new song and we'll call it Rosanna. Fantastic. If you come into Window, you can choose Songs, Lyrics, Chords. Um, Somebody just wrote in, Rosanna is in the G key. Yeah, it's it's true. Um, and if you know it that quickly, then you're all good. Um, or is it in the key of F? We could have a conversation about that. It does switch a little bit, doesn't it? Um, okay, so we're going to head over to the edit view. We're going to do command paste. And you're going to see it has brought this in. So when I go to view now, it kind of gives us this nice layout. This is beautiful, actually. Um, I could see this might be handy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click the Save button, and it's going to give me the option to save it automatically in this default location. I recommend um, that you do that. So I'm going to click Save, and I'm going to replace this because, um, you know, uh, it's already in there for me. But now I'm going to keep this on top. So when I, oh, check that out. We'll come back to this. This is a bit of a, a spoiler alert for next week. Um, if you are watching right now and you are a musical theater person uh definitely let me know in the comments this this one's going back to my roots here um, but within rosanna we have this chord pro thing now this is not new um this is not new but there are some things that are new so let's start um, by inserting a widget that will allowed us uh, allow us to scroll through this so i'm gonna go back to my uh panel here and I'm just going to insert a knob. How about the 11? Because you just can't resist, right? System actions. And I'm just going to start by typing in Pro, which you'll see has given me this option, uh, uh, Chord Pro Page Offset. So I'm going to select that. And we'll head back now to our Chord Pro page. We'll keep this on top. So now what I have the ability to do is scroll using this block here. So if this is mapped to a widget, which right now it's currently not mapped to a widget, um, you will be able to scroll through uh, your Chord Pro charts using a knob. I think this is pretty cool, but there is more available to us within Gig Performer uh, specifically, which I think brings this to another new level. Okay, so curly brackets. Um, curly brackets, song, part, name colon, space, intro. And what I've done here is I've told Gig Performer, hey, when I go to intro, make sure that I'm here. Now, let's see here. Verse one. Well, it doesn't matter. For demonstration purposes, let's jump down to not quite a year. And we'll call this part song, part, name, colon, verse curly bracket we'll go to view now that has disappeared but look at how cool this is when i select verse my music jumps to the right spot this is pretty cool i'm a major fan of this update and if you're doing a small enough show and again we haven't quite unpacked this yet you can have the same functionality with actual sheet music which is amazing. Okay, um, if we have any questions, pop them in. Um, most tabs online are so wrong. I don't know if I could disagree with that, but some of them are right. And sometimes you just use your ears. You know, that's how it goes. Where to learn syntax used for Gig Performer 4.1.
Great question. I'm assuming that you're talking about the chord pro syntax here. Um, and there is documentation about this on the gig performer manual. Um, and this is a new feature. So if you go to the gig performer manual and you search chord pro, you'll be able to find it pretty easily. Uh, you can also always go back and check out this video. Um, and it'll, it'll, you know, walk you through the steps. Okay. Fan. Fantastic. So we've got another new feature that I want to show you. Um, and this one is also a workflow improvement. So we have added to Gig Performer a way to automatically open and close your plugins. And I think this can really be useful in particular when you're in the building phase. So you have to go into your settings in order to access this. Now I'm using a screenshot right now because if I didn't use a screenshot, um, you, you'd lose all my audio. You wouldn't be able to hear me. But you can see underneath the display, um, auto open and close plugin editors is an option. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how this works. Let's say, for example, I'm working on a piano sound here and I jump to Rosanna. Well, it automatically closed that window for me. But when I jump back now, it will also automatically open this. And maybe I have my organ here. Well, now as I'm jumping through, whatever has automatically, uh, whatever's been left open comes back. So you have a very uh, quick way to access these things. I'm wondering if this is a question or not, but I can't read it and talk simultaneously. So I'm going to put it up. Okay. Back to the global song parts or variation. That's great. Previously, I think you had to do this in global MIDI with direct access and a CC value. This would enable me to use via different. This would enable me to use via different CC numbers. I'm not sure if I understand this question, but you could you could map these blocks to a widget. So that that might that might answer your question. Can you clarify what you're asking? I see. David furiously typing, so he might, he might have uh, have the answer here. That was in GP3. Okay, that was in GP3. Good to know. Fantastic. So, um, okay, plugin editing, sweets. Please bring all the tutorial videos from this channel in a new forum at our community so we can ask questions and directly get an answer. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah, sure, makes sense. Okay. Um, so now we have this ability to, uh, David, did I answer your question or did you want to jump on? I saw that message too late. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, is the GUI memory that you just showed taking more memory on the system? It's a good question. I don't know if it's a relevant question and I'm going to tell you why it's irrelevant. You probably aren't going to do this when you're performing live. So, um, so that, that's the answer. I, I don't know that it's worth jumping down this hole. Um, <laughs> David, did you want to come in? Yeah. Okay. Here, here it goes. Just when Here's you're David. performing live. So, um, hmm. so that, that's the answer. I, I don't know that it's worth jumping down this hole. I think, uh, um, David, I think <laughs> you're listening. So I'm D hearing David, did you want to come in? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here, here it goes. Just when you're performing I, live. I, 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 talk into that a so, with, um, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you now. Did you? Yeah, okay, I can't hear you. Hang on a second. Um, okay. This is muted. This is my fault. Hang on a second. <laughs> no worries. <Okay>. No worries. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I didn't realize it popped up. I was in the middle of having my lunch while I was no. watching. Not a problem. Um, just to answer those two questions, which I don't have up anymore because yep. I had a YouTube video and, and everything was out of sync. Um, the first question about the CC messages. Yes. Um, Gig Performer Four added the system action. Um, yes, um, G G Gig Performer 4 has had, uh, let me try again. So in, <laughs> before Gig Performer 4, you could only do it from Global MIDI with that direct access. In Gig Performer 4, we added the System Actions plugin, and you can use that to control directly. So that fixed the problem, but that's not what Brett was showing you. Brett was showing a concept where when you have global widgets, um, and they are, and you want to have a local rack space with a widget that maps to the global, you no longer have to set that mapping up manually. 
if you copy the global widgets that have already been attached to um, parameters, when you shift paste them into local rack space, the mappings come with them. So it's solely a workflow improvement to uh, make it easier and quicker to set up a local rack space to control global parameters. Um, that was the first question. The second question about the plugin editors, um, it may take up more memory. Um, it depends. Uh, you don't, first of all, you don't have to use it if you're short of memory. Um, and it really depends on the actual plugin. Um, however, this issue about if it takes more memory, I get asked this one a lot. And it's like, yeah, maybe it does. But like, what were you using your memory for? I mean, you're not doing email or surfing the web or writing a document in Word while you're performing. So, you know, your memory is there to be used. So right now, Geek Form is using it. Um, so don't get bogged down by how much memory unless you actually run out, which is a different problem. Right. And, right. and so, so I'm going to mute gonna you mute for you. a second, David, just so that uh, I don't get the double talking. But I'll, I, anyway, so this question here uh, takes more. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong one. So you have to disable the function. So I'm going to say no, but think think about this, Alex. Like when you're performing live. Um, you, okay, let me speak again. Can, can you hear? Can I be heard? Yes. Okay, so you don't have to disable the function. What what that um, what that feature is doing is remembering what plugins were open and then it's reopening them. Um, if you have all your plugins closed on your gig, they're not going to open magically. It's not like we're just opening magically every plugin in every when you switch to Rackspace. We're only opening ones that were previously opened by you. Um, so it lets you switch and keep certain plugins open. It's not opening them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's probably going to be used more while you're prepping than when you're performing. So, um, all right. Uh, thanks for popping on, David. Bye. <laughs> um, quick question from Corel regarding Chord Pro. Then it has the ability to use PDF chord charts instead of text files. So it's it's a good question. Uh, and the answer to this question is probably not the one that you want to hear. But come back next week. We will show you how it works. Um, yeah. Okay. Um had widgets and assign different CC numbers. Okay, okay. This, Michael, let, let me show you this. It, it's not CC numbers that you can assign. Let, let's, let's jump back. I think that's probably what's happening here. So, um, oh, and you know what? By the way, this is the place to be learning. So no need to apologize for um, asking this question. What's happened here is that I have created in my global rack space three widgets. Okay, and these widgets are attached to a system actions block. And inside the system actions, we have these options for all selecting different um, song parts. I see David furiously typing. Um, oh, uh, Michael, are you on Gig Performer 3? Are you still using Gig Performer 3? That will also help us um, answer this question. Um, but, but once you assign uh, these parameters, all it does is jump to that selected variation. That's all it's doing. So in terms of using CC numbers or not using CC numbers, okay, yeah, so you're in Gig Performer 4. So in terms of using CCs or not, well, I mean, it, it's it's not really relevant because if you are in your global rack space, this can be mapped to whatever you want it to be mapped to, right? If you go into MIDI, you, you can select anything. Uh, I'm just using key for now, but... Um, my key lab sending all sorts of crazy messages. But this can be mapped to whatever you want. Here's button one on my other controller. Uh, let's make sure that's okay. So now when I'm in my regular rack space, this is gonna jump me back. So you can map in any way that you, you see fit. And it's not a specific one, it's a specific number. So it will always jump you to the second one or the third one or whatever it is that you desire. Um, CC numbers as I'm using the FCC. Yeah, so you would map your controller to one of these widgets. That's that's what you would do. Um, oh, David's waving at me. Hold on here. Pulling David in. Hey, David. Okay, um, let me explain something because there's a bit of confusion here. In Gig Performer 3, there was a special option in the uh, global 
uh, many options. Actually, if you bring them up, I can probably, sh if you bring up the global, uh, or you probably can, you lose I audio, can, right? I'll lose my audio, yeah. yeah okay. Um, there was a special option that we added <clears throat> to allow you to use a single CC number with different values to switch around. And that was a hack that we added in at the time. Gotcha. In Gig Performer 4, um, with the use of um, um, the system actions thing, which just has functions for selecting particular parts or variations, you can use widgets to trigger them, and the widgets can be attached to anything. So you can use different CC numbers, um, uh, whatever you like. And typically, the way I have my pedal, I don't have an FC300, but I have a similar pedal. Um, what I do now, and it works much better, if you've got, say, eight buttons, uh, what you should do for general use with Gig Performer, you just need one bank, pick eight CC numbers, say CC 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Set them to be momentary. When you push them, they send 127. When you let go, they send zero. And then from there, use Gig Performer to map to widgets, uh, and then use those widgets to control the system actions if you want to do things like switch parts. Um, that's much easier um, than, than, uh, than doing it the other way. Um, if you only have a single set of buttons, you don't need to from multiple places, then you can use the global set settings, the global song settings. I don't have Geek Performer here. I don't remember what we called it. And you can just assign uh, each of those buttons and it'll, it'll select song part, and those buttons work regardless of what song you're in, it will be the same CC messages. You can do it either way. It's much more flexible than the older way of doing it. Yeah, and just to elaborate that too, so we did an entire episode just on this, Michael, literally what we're talking about. So go back and check out the widgets episode because we talk in depth about this. The widgets make your life easier, way easier, way simpler. Um, so definitely worth doing that. Thank, thanks for clearing that up, David. I appreciate it. Um, okay. So uh, we're, we, we've gone all over here. That's okay. So there's one more feature, um, but um, let, yeah, let's look at it. There's, there's one more feature I wanted to show for today, um, and that is uh, for the MIDI file player. So um, what we, oops, okay. So what we'll do is I'm clicking on my screen sharing instead of on my, uh, actual gig performer. Okay. So all I've got set up here is a MIDI file player. That's it. Um, and inside of the MIDI file player, there is a new, uh, feature called sync. So I guess what you noticed is as soon as I clicked the sync button, um, Gig Performer started playing my MIDI track. So the reason that you might want to do this, right, is like, hey, as soon as the playhead starts moving, I want this MIDI file to start going. So it just makes it easier to keep everything in sync. So when I hit play... It starts and... When, uh, when I hit pause, it stops. Um, so previously, this didn't happen. Now we have the ability to do that. Um, I don't know that there's too much more to elaborate on this. This is a workflow enhancement. Um, what's really cool, though, is now if you're like, you're say for whatever reason, you're in setless view here, you have a new song. Well, this, uh, I don't know, new song for now, and you want to have uh, a button, perhaps, that turns your playhead on, well, then, as soon as you p turn the playhead on, right, if it's just on by default, I guess I need to make sure I have this MIDI player in here, um, if it's just on, it's going to start. So maybe your click comes in, maybe whatever it is, it just makes your actual performance seamless, and, and that's what we're always after, right? We want the seamless performance experience. Um, so just a couple of workflow updates. Now, if you are a current Gig Performer 4 user, these updates will be released on October 7th, 2021. If you are not, consider checking it out. Um, I'm, I'm a convert from Ableton. 
So there's some stuff here. We have a free two-week trial available. Um, click in, give it a shot. If you're currently using it, you will get this automatically. Um, I was actually talking with Noboja. It's it's interesting because Gig Performer is very much living and breathing. You know, where you're purchasing into software, but it's constantly being improved and updated based on community feedback, based on what works. Um, there is a community of, I, I, I don't know, the best way I could describe them is like Gig Performer Ninjas. I don't know what to call them, but the, the beta testers are insanely thorough. So unbelievably good. So, you know, everything is vetted and they're kind of like, hey, it'd be great if we could copy and paste. Well, now we can copy and paste. Um, and there are more things coming too. So we've got Gig Performer 4.1, but that's not where we're going to stop. Um, Dan just wrote in, I was just thinking with all the new Gig Performer features, I rarely use Ableton Live anymore. Yeah, I mean, th you're not the first one. Um, that, that's, I think that's awesome. I'm so happy to hear that this is working for you. Um, before we jump off, I do want to pause and just, if we have any questions, anything that needs to be answered before, uh, we wrap up for today, a little bit of a shorter episode, but that is all right. Um, I'm just going to talk about this for a hot second. Dan, gig performer can control your slides. I'm assuming that you are running pro presenter. Um, so if you were using MIDI to control your slides previously within Ableton, you can now use Gig Performer to control your slides the same exact way. Um, it would just it would just be a matter of sending the same sending it to the same place. So if you were using like a a network that connected to ProPresenter in some fashion, you would set it up the same way. You'd, you'd send your MIDI to the same place you were sending it before, just from Gig Performer instead of from Ableton. So you totally could do this. Um, that would actually might be an interesting thing to cover at some point. So to answer your question, yes, Gig Performer can control your slides. Um, that's all. Gig Performer can do that. Um, okay. Uh, looks like we haven't had any other questions come in. So thank you all for being here. Um, I'm really excited about these updates. Again, October 7th, this is going to be released. Um, oh, looks like we've got one more from Michael. Potentially place that entire thing much better than main stage. Michael, uh, make sure that you join our community forums because um, I think you're going to find some good support there. And I'm so happy to hear that you're thinking of potentially replacing everything. Gig Performer totally can do that. Um, always goes above and beyond. MIDI file player. I get that it plays MIDI files, for instance, while performing a song. Can I trigger tracks to play a difficult riff? Um, nah. Maybe, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. But um, yes, we can cover MIDI file player. Absolutely. Um, and it can play MIDI files. It can also send CC messages. Uh, it really can do quite a bit. Um, But yeah, I, I don't know that I would do a difficult riff yet. Um, you can mute or restart a track on a fly. Turn them off and on. D do you want to talk about that, David? Yeah. Uh, hi again. <coughs> I finished my lunch. Per perfect. Love it. Uh, so um, the a the answer is so the MIDI file player is obviously has multiple tracks. Um, and even if you don't have multiple tracks, you have a single track you, you can, and you're using different channels, you can do a similar thing. But basically, if you think about it, the MIDI file player is just sending MIDI events just like a MIDI in block would be sending them if you're playing a keyboard. So you can mute them um, if you want. And if you mute them, um, I'm pretty sure we'll automatically send a note off so that you don't get a stuck note. So um, you could just turn on, if you're playing a MIDI file and you get to the point where there's something difficult and you want it to play, you would just turn on, um, you would just turn on the sound either by unmuting the track or, you know, have it going into a synth and uh, just turn on the synth at that point. So there's lots of ways you, you could do it. Um, you might just have nothing else on that particular track except the uh, except the difficult part, which just comes on. So there's lots of different ways you could organize that depending on what you're trying to do. Yep, okay. We got another question coming in. 
Midi, Midi, uh, we do not currently support generation of Midi clock. We can respond to it and we can also um, do live. We, we support Ableton Link, so we can link. And there's lots of applications out there, just even small applications um, that support um, Ableton Link. So you can go that way. But uh, we, we don't currently, it's on our list, but we don't currently generate uh, MIDI, MIDI clock. Sorry. Uh, Ken had gig performing for a week or so and loving it. We're happy to have you, Ken. Glad that you're loving it. Um, all right. Um, I feel like we, sh we could talk about this. So if I'm correct, David, correct me if I'm wrong here. The reason that we don't do this, or one of the reasons we don't do this, Ooh, is because wish. we're wish, uh, wish. Al allowing like custom images to be brought oh, in. Oh, yeah. Um, so here, so there's a bit of history here, uh, and it's kind of, it's actually kind of interesting, although yeah. I don't want to have to tell long stories. No, 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 it's good. I think we should talk about this. I think it's relevant. Oh, okay, well, th well, there's some history. So... When we first decided to do Gig Performer, um, I had looked, I had been using other applications. I had used MainStage, which at the time I thought was very clever. The indirection, which we do with widgets, was in MainStage. They weren't the first to do it. Uh, it turns out Motu Performer had a version of that even earlier, but it's still a pretty nice idea. Separation of MIDI and your hardware from controlling parameters. It's a great idea, it really lets you do all sorts of things. Um, my focus and my development partner's focus, because we both tour, um, was on, our focus was on stability. I was interested in getting up on stage and not having to be worried that if I push a slider on a controller, will my system crash? That was our primary goal at the time. We didn't care what it looked like. Um, I look at some of the designs that uh, some of our users have put together with Gig Performer 4. I'm like, you know, I'll drag a widget here. I'll drag another one there. I'll drag another one. I don't care that they line up. I don't care if they're different sizes. I'm always controlling them from my hardware. My laptop sits to the side. So I didn't have a focus on the GUI side, the looking pretty. Never occurred to me that that would be even of interest. However, a lot of our users are, and our beta group and some of our customers kept asking, they're trying to do clever things to the eye candy stuff. So a lot of stuff got added in to Gig Performer 4 uh, to make it easier to do design stuff because a lot of people seem to like creating nice groups of widgets, putting a shape around them, aligning them up and all that kind of stuff. So we added a bunch of support for that. However, we also care that Gig Performer is still fast and responsive. So the mechanism we use to implement those widgets doesn't really support images because you have to deal with all sorts of bits instead of vectors um, and pixels to do images and then resizing them and it looks ugly. And so it was just lower priority. We've been asked about this. Uh, my, my partner is much better at the GUI stuff than I am. I really do the language stuff and the OSC stuff and a lot of the back end stuff. Um, my partner is much better at the GUI stuff. So we know that people want it. All I can say is probably someday, but I don't know when, because our primary goal really is still you get up on stage, don't sweat that there's going to be a problem. That's still our primary goal. Yep. And I think there's something to be said there, even just in terms of like how we think think as performers. Sometimes it's cool to have something that looks and feels nice to use, but like from just a mental state, like you are, you're delivering a service, you're delivering a performance, you're inviting people into an experience. So it's just, um, yeah, it's just not a, it's not the top thing. It's not the most important thing. Um, David, you've been uh, called a true mus musician here. So whatever, the, whatever that means. <laughs> it sounds like it's a good thing. I don't know. I don't know. Um, that, that, uh, so two things. First of all, yeah, thank you for that. Um, it really is the case that actually touring, I just did a show last week, uh, and I have more shows coming up, even in COVID time. It's a bit weird. But it's re a lot of the stuff that's in Gig Performer has literally happened because I was like up on stage going, damn, I really want to be able to do this. Sorry to anyone. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, why can't I do this? This is a nuisance. Um, 
I don't know for uh, my favorite example of this feature. I don't know how many of you use the recording stuff in uh, in um, gig format to record a show. Um, I was on tour actually in Europe with one of my bands, and um, I was watching a sound engineer um, sticking a Mac on top of the mixing board, uh, running Logic and connecting them, creating a bunch of tracks and um and to record the show and apparently he'd been doing that um, for a long time and he was very frustrated because logic would often crash you'd get it or it would pop up a dialogue overload and then it's stuck and you know he's not up on stage when the show is um uh running so he was screwed so i was looking at that this was a few years ago and i said to my partner i said you know we could just have a button. We have all the inputs coming in anyway, because you can plug guitars and mics and you can do live sound with gig form if you want. So wouldn't it be nice if we could just record the stuff? And we added a feature uh, where you, if you push a button, all the incoming channels just get recorded to WAV files in a timestamped folder. So the idea being every night, just push the button and you'll get a new collection of your live show that you can then throw into um, your doll later. And actually, I was at a new place the other night and we used, I guess, a great story. <laughs> um, uh, we, we, our, our drummer, who's, who, who's the band leader for one of the bands, it's a Steely Dan tribute band, he wanted to record the show and he had Pro Tools on his system and he was having trouble. I said, well, put Gig Performer on your laptop. So he, so we put Gig Performer on his laptop. We brought it up to the front of house. It wasn't our engineer. It was I'm not going to mention names, but it was just it was the house engineer. Uh, plugged it into their sound card with a USB cord. Showed them, push this button, and you know, and off you go. So at the end of the show, um, Jerry goes up to pick up the laptop. The guy says, "There's a charge of fifty dollars to record the show." Jerry looked at him and said, are you telling me you're charging me $50 to push the start button on my laptop? And uh, that was the, nevertheless, he didn't pay him. But uh, I told him they should buy Geek Performer that they could charge everybody else $50 for recording the show. But it was kind of funny. But the point is, a lot of the stuff that's in Geek Performer really comes from us using it um, the, that new feature where you can copy the global widgets and they're automatically mapped happened because I was sitting in my basement preparing for a show and I was going nuts with um, some widgets that I wanted to have like, oh, if I could just map these automatically. So, you know, these things are coming from people actually using the product uh, as opposed to, you know, it's outsourced somewhere to a bunch of people who don't actually play. And I think that makes mm -hmm. a big difference. Thanks. I talk too much. No, no, it's good. Um, thank you, David. Oops, sorry. sorry. They don't give me a microphone on stage. <laughs> Maybe they should give you a microphone though. I only sing I only sing for my own amazement. <laughs> I love it. Um thank you David for being here. Um <clears throat> yes, the, all all sorts of stuff here that is great. Um Glenn, it's coming. It's coming soon. Here's the deal. We release things uh once we know that they are working 100%. Um, so whatever's coming into gig performer that you're using, that you have access to has been tested and gutted and all of this stuff. Um, so hang in there. It's coming. Um, I see David furiously typing, so I, I'm going to see if he is answering that question a little bit, um, be before we wrap it up. Um, but yeah, it's coming. Um, let's see here. Oh, here. Um, I'm not quite sure. I, I think N Naboja, I wasn't here last week. Naboja did that by just as a teaser. Mm -hmm. um, um, the, the answer to that, and, and we have to be very careful because it's more a legal thing. Uh, we don't want anybody to buy Geek Performer on the promise that something will happen mm -hmm. or something will be there. We don't want to tell you, yes, you should buy it now because we're going to have this feature. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and so b basically, we really generally don't talk about stuff that's not actually we know a hundred percent is there. This is the first time actually we've ever even had a, a a a session where we've talked about something that's not actually out yet, but it is going to be released. It's ready to go. So you know we're a hundred percent certain. But generally, um, we 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 can't we don't promise anything. 
um, that's not actually there. Because, you know, we may run into a problem and we have to pull it out again or it breaks something that we didn't think of at the time. So, sorry, um, I can't tell you. Hopefully, it will come sooner rather than later, but I can't say if and when. No, no guarantees on, on that. Sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, everything is tested. We're like, we're, we're, putting out, we're putting out stuff that runs that's uh, top of the line. That display of the key, um, I don't, re nobody's stirring up trouble. I, 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 don't, um, I, I don't remember if that system action to display the key is in this version. Uh, I just can't remember. There's, there's a lot of little features that um, haven't been mentioned, so I just don't remember. If it isn't, I do know that that actually is implemented. So if it's not in this version, it will be in the next version. I just can't tell you when the next version will come out. Right. I think this is there, David. I, I, I thought it was, but I don't remember. Yes, uh, I'm actually, I, I, I can run. Um, I have a build here. I can check very quickly i'll tell you in a moment okay uh, so, but hold yeah, on I'm, just a I'm second as well. I, I will tell you ah no oh, there's a song key there's a oh. song key parameter in the system actions block yes so i yeah that's what i thought um so so i think there there is now there is a function uh, system action that if you connect a label to it um it will display the key of the song um there 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 will never be Patch persist for variations. Um, it, that doesn't make sense. Patch persist works because we're keeping multiple copies of plugins around. It, you, you cannot you cannot do patch persist when it's the same plugin because then you're dependent on the plugin being able to do it. So if you've got a plugin that can handle patch persist when you change from one patch to another, that will work in a variation if you make a variation that changes the patch. But uh, that is not something we can do, uh, and that's one of the reasons you have rack spaces. That's what lets you do patch persist. Now, I do know that one of our amazing uh, beta group users has created some scripts to do some kind of fake patch persist um, that I, I ha I've actually had not, not had time to try it myself. I don't know how well it works. But um, uh, th there may be something. But the real patch persist that we do, um, where you can like be holding a chord down and then you switch, and when you, it's a completely different sound, uh, that will only work for variation uh, for rack spaces. And, rack spaces. And, and as a bit of a workaround, if you are looking to get that function, you can use a MIDI filter block and just block the note on messages. That may be what he did with the scriptlet, and then you have, but then you have, and then he'd have multiple copies of the plugin in in the same rack space. That's a workaround, and it's a hack, and you could, in principle, do that with anything. Mm -hmm. um, but our model kind of doesn't require you um, to have the plugin, uh, you know, multiple plugins in the same rack space. Um, what before before I give you back to Brett, I, um, I'm hogging the space here. One of the things that I think a lot of people perhaps who are A, new to Geek Performer, and B, have used other systems before. Um, two things. One, people get worried about the use of memory. I, I, I don't want to use too many rack spaces because I don't want to use too much memory. And the answer to that is, you know, I've said this before, you know, you're not doing email while you're on stage. You, your memory is there to be used. Use it. Um, Using multiple rack spaces doesn't necessarily take up more, much more memory. When you, when you have the same plugin multiple times, this is not true for sample plugins, but for non-sample plugins, having the same plugin in multiple rack spaces will not use a lot more memory because the plugin itself is the same, it's just the data is different. However, if you're running out of memory, if you really are, there is a feature called... Um, um, Predictive loading. Uh, thank you. Predictive. Uh, I'm losing it. Predictive loading, which is designed to allow you to have literally hundreds of rack spaces, even thousands in principle. I've never tried it, um, but you could. Uh, I hate open source, Dan. Uh, we can have a different fight um, around that. I'm not a fan, um, but that's a different conversation. 
Um, the, the point is, um, I think a, the people who ask the question about memory mostly are coming from Windows where Windows was a hog. It was known to like use a lot of memory and people got really focused about using, about using resources up and trying to be very careful to keep uh, the resources down. In these days with Windows 10 uh, and so on, uh, Microsoft's gotten much better and it's just not the issue it used to be. So don't get too bogged down thinking about how much memory am I going to use. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, just use it uh, and, you know, put your plugins in different rack spaces if it makes sense. Don't try to squish everything into one um, place. You'll get better CPU performance because the plugins in other rack spaces are bypassed and turned off so they're not using CPU cycles uh, and so on. Uh, let me hand you back. Yes. And if you are, if you are concerned about memory uh, on a Windows computer, uh, the, the uh, Gig Performer team member, uh, Nemanja, uh, wrote a fantastic book uh, ebook through our website that you can check out that talks about setting up your computer, your Windows computer to do audio software. Um, I don't think so. Um, I don't think Windows 11 will be a problem, uh, but it's hard to say. Um, all right. Uh, well, I'll say this. David and Naboja are always on top of what's coming out. They're generally ahead of the game. They want your computer to work. Um, so I can say that much. Friends, thank you for being here. We will be back next Thursday, same time, to go over the remainder of features. Um, so Corel, uh, we will be talking about the uh, sheet music thing um, and, and a couple of other small ones. Um, thank you all for being here. Always great. And um, yeah, we'll see you next week.